Hello Commanders, Commander Placer here, and welcome back to another Elite Dangerous video. So today we're taking a little look at the build that survived 24 hours. Leading up to my 24 hour charity stream, I did have a lot of questions people asking me about the outfitting that I went for on my Corvette. Well, rather than answering everyone individually, I decided it'd be best for me to put a video together and show everyone at the same time. We're going to be having a look at hard points, internals, and most importantly, the utility mounts, because I get that a lot. Many questions about the shield configuration, but like I say, we're going to be going over that in just a minute. The first thing we're going to have a look at is going to be the hard points. This is going to be pretty simple to be honest, and it shouldn't take too long to go through. So in the huge hard points, we have got beam lasers fixed. So we've got two huge fixed beam lasers. Modification wise, we've gone for efficient weapon grade five and regen sequence. The reason why I went for this is efficient, keeps you nice and cool, increases damage and has literally no drawbacks whatsoever. The distributor draw reduction is also very good as well. The reason why I chose the regen sequence is so that I could actually top up my wingmate shields because during those 24 hours I was going to be joined by lots of different people and it would only make sense that I would help them out considering they were helping me out. And yes, we have got two of them, so they're exactly the same, so we don't really need to look at the second one. Next up we have burst lasers gimbaled. Everything else is burst lasers and is gimbaled. They all have the same modifications as well and they've got oversized and they're efficient. So efficient grade 5 and oversized as a secondary effect. The reason why I've gone with this because no this is not going to be the best build in the world. It is not going to be the the true meta if you're talking about the ultimate damage delivery. This is all about basically surviving 24 hours. This works. The reason why I went for efficient is because, again, reduces your distributor draw, your thermal load, increases your damage, and then oversized again gives it more punch as well, and increases your power draw, so it kind of balances it out. And yes, we've gone for that for all of the hard points as well. So we're talking about the large, two mediums, and two small, all equipped with burst lasers, efficient, and then oversized. Onto the utility mounts we have got shield boosters up to the hilt. That's right, nothing but shield boosters. They do have different configurations, so you guys are going to have to bear with me as I go through this. So as you can see, we've got the top four here are all heavy duty, and they all have super capacitor on. Every single one of them is their modifications. Heavy duty grade five, super capacitors. The reason why I've gone for these is because it's raw mega joules. But don't worry, we're going to be balancing out the resistances a little bit later on. So as I said, there's four of them, and next up we've gone for a single resistance augmented, and the modifications on that is grade 5 resistance augmented with thermo block. The reason being is that when I first did the build, it was a little bit skewed and it didn't have quite enough thermal resistance. The final three shield boosters are all, and I mean all of them, are thermal resistance with thermo block. That way you've got the maximum thermal resistance out of each one. Yeah, sure, there's a little bit of a drop in the shield boosting, but it's very small, only 1.2%, so we're not going to worry about that too much. And as you can see, the shield strength is 6,228.9. Yes, 0.9, because there's one of them that doesn't quite have the full, uh, <laughs> full engineered to the grade 5. It's like maybe well, it's like point 0.1 off, but never mind. We won't worry about that too much. With the optionals, and in the optionals we do have whole reinforcement modules which really do balance out the resistances across the board. Really good. So yeah, as you can see, the integrity of the hull is 8087.3. That's pretty nice. It, it works out alright, but obviously without module reinforcements you're in trouble. So next up, power plant. Modifications. We've gone for armoured power plant. The first time I've armoured a power plant it seemed to be the right time to do it. I've also monstered it as well because I did need the extra power and as you can see down here we're pretty close, running pretty close on the old uh, power thrusters. Thrusters we have gone for of course dirty drive tuning grade 5 and drag drives. This has really boosted the speed, top boost speed where it says down here it actually goes to 370 just I think it must be maybe a 369.6 or something like that so it really does just push it over slightly. Uh, FSD, uh, the FSD on here is increased range of course and then mass manager and that gives us a wicked jump range of, a, of this. 
it's pointless, don't worry about it, it's a Corvette. Uh, it really could be lightened down to make it jump further, and when the Guardian FSD boosters come out, I'm definitely going to be using them. It's going to be really handy. So onto the life support, because, you know, life support. We've gone for lightweight, because <laughs> why not? Chances are my life support's not going to be shot out by an NPC. The power distributor is, of course, we've gone for charge enhanced because that is essentially the best one to go for for charge rate and consistent weapons fire. Also, with weapons recharge and engines recharge, it definitely is. It does what it says on the tin. I've also gone for super conduits on this one to again increase the recharge rate, uh, although at the expense of capacity. Finally, sensors. Oh boy. Long range, grade 5 on AA sensors. Now everyone's going to be like, why did you do that? Why for the mass? Yes, they are 320 ton sensors. But the maximum emission range is 13.4 kilometers. And when you're in a house res with loads of other people, it really helps you out to be able to go forth and find targets that other people can't see and get out there first. And that's why I went for it. And it worked out. It made sense to me. And let's take a look at those optionals, shall we? This is going to be where things get a little bit interesting, a little bit fruity. So we've got the Prismatic Shield Generator 7, size 7 of course, and modifications wise we've gone for reinforced high cap. I know you're probably wondering what on earth is going on with my shield boosters and all this kind of stuff, but it levels out really nicely. Of course, the reason why I went high cap is because what's the point of having prismatics unless you're going to have that huge, huge pool of mega jewels to draw from. Of course, Regeneration is totally out, that's not going to happen for you, ignore it, forget it, it's just not happening. Uh, as much as you'd like it to, no, no it's not. But it definitely worked out quite nicely for me, we're going to have a look at the resistances in a minute, uh, or towards the end of the video, and then we can really see how that worked out. I've also put a uh, fighter bay in here, it's only a 60, yes I could fit a size 7 one in there, the reason why I haven't is because uh, there weren't any available at this station at the time, uh, which uh, was my bad. But yeah, you definitely could put a size 7 fighter hangar in here and have all your fighters you could possibly want. Pretty handy, um, Mars from Ghost Giraffe, he managed to sacrifice about 5 of my fighters in no time at all. Pretty special. Uh, next up we've got a lot of hull reinforcements, so you've got 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, a 4, a 4, and that's uh, oh, and another 5, and then another 5. Huh, look at that. And that's why our hull is so ridiculously strong. Uh, we'll, talk, we'll go through each one, uh, because even not even I know what these are. It's been a long time since I've done it. So, heavy duty deep plating. Next up, we've got uh, heavy, heavy duty reflective plating. Okay. Interesting. Next up, heavy duty deep plating. I really should have arranged these, shouldn't I? Uh, next up, heavy duty deep plating again. Oh look, heavy duty deep plating. Wow, all that whole strength. Uh, that's because resistances balance out really well with heavy duty. Next up, heavy duty deep plating. Oh boy. Spoiler alert, this one's gonna be heavy duty. Yeah, heavy duty deep plating. Cool, that's fine. Uh, Yep, heavy duty deep plating again on the size five, and finally I'm gonna I'm gonna call it. I think I think this one's actually gonna be heavy duty, and it's not gonna be deep plating. Just an old school heavy duty one. Wow, look at that. So I guess we managed to keep that one in there. Hmm, interesting. So it could be slightly better. Who would have thought? Could be even higher. Ooh, even higher hole. Definitely, it could be up to. Oh, it's not a huge difference, is it? It's an extra sixty points. So yeah, it could be eight thousand one hundred and forty around that that kind of size. But that's basically it. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the lucky lady build that saw me through the twenty-four hours. Uh, I suppose we should have a look at the shield resistances and all that kind of stuff before you guys go. What were the resistances? So, shield health, overall 6,229, kinetic 49.4, thermal 48.8, explosive 57.8. Armor health, <laughs> 8,087, and then kinetic resistance 57, thermal 50, explosive 56.6. So overall, a very, very strong ship. No, this is not an alpha build. No, this is not going to help you step out into PvP and destroy people, but this is a very, very good survivable build. You will require healing from other people, it is no option, your shields will not regen quick enough. It's as simple as that. But what I will say is that this will have the link in the description for the um, ED shipyard build, so you don't have to just be like, what was that? What was that? What was that? Because there's going to be a lot of that kicking around. 
But I am going to call time for the video there, guys. I'm going to say thank you very much for watching. Please make sure you do like and you subscribe. Also, make sure you turn on notifications. That way you get an alert every time I put a new video out. Also, at the same time, if you are looking to support the channel, please do check the links in the video description as there are a few different ways to do so. But once again, thank you for watching. Commander Plater, out.